Volatility in the equity market, so you really have a window into this. How do you see where they are right now, and how is your bank particularly faring? I'm not going to comment on, a, on the, the beginning of the year, but clearly we are in better market conditions. You mm -hmm. know, we suffered from a low volatility. It was a little bit what interest rate in retail, low interest rate in retail was. Low volatility in global markets was not good. We probably enter into something of a kind of progressive normalization. It might take some time, but at least with the normalization of the monetary uh, policies of central bank, I think we, we are exiting this very low volatility environment. So in anticipation of that possibility, how have you positioned your bank so you can take the most advantage of it without having undue risk? We are building businesses for the long term and which are client driven. We have in uh, equity derivatives in particular two categories of activities, structured products, which are tailored for investors. They are not that sensitive to the volatility. They are fundamentally uh, meeting client demand. And then the, the flow business, the volume business. And of course, with volatile environments, you see better volumes, in particular on the equity derivative side. So are you taking on more risk then? No, no. I mean, the, you know, the banks, bank businesses have changed dramatically. Mm. The risks are very limited. It's again, client-driven bu business. Volumes, it's again on the execution side. So your value at risk would either be decreasing yeah. or holding steady? The, the, the value at risk are, are remaining low, you know. We, we have so much constraints. Uh, you know, we, the lessons of the crisis have been drawn, so we don't increase the risk. Fundamentally, we are developing a client activity. Is that a good thing for your bank, or is it too severe, the regulation? Is it constraining you too much as we move into a more normalized environment? Listen, we have no choice anyway. Eh? We have to live with uh, significant regulations, and not just on capital and prudential regulations. We have also in Europe other regulations, like MIFID II and, and, and regulations and data. The most important thing for me is beyond the long-term opportunity in Europe financial markets. We are going probably to complete the banking union. We are going to see probably deeper capital markets. There are long-term opportunities and we can take advantage of this. On top of this, the economic activity is good in Europe. You know, we have growth rates with, that we've not seen for the last maybe 10 years across the Eurozone. That's an opportunity for banks. And hopefully, we'll see also rates rising. You know, we suffered dramatically from negative rates. You did not have that in the US. It's painful, I can tell you. <laughs> and progressively, with perhaps a little bit more inflation and the exit of monetary policy, we will see a much better rate environment. Well, but it's not just a steeper curve that you need. You need to get out of the negative deposit rate environment. So what's your base case for that? Well, our assumption, you know, in our strategic plan was that progressively uh, in 2019, we will exit the uh, negative rate territory for deposit rates. You know, we've, an we've growth rates at 2.3, 2.4% for the Eurozone for the next two years. Normally, you should see also progressively lower in, uh, in employment rate, which means also higher inflation on wages. And I think that the uh, outlook is much better and that the monetary, uh, the, the central banks would like to exit the monetary uh, policies progressively to avoid any asset bubble any uh, distortion on, on prices. As you look forward to uh, European Banking Union, which you anticipate at this point, does that mean SOCGEN has to get bigger? And particularly, will there be consolidation, cross-border consolidation, consolidation with France? What do you anticipate? First of all, again, the completion of the European Banking Union will be probably at the top of the agenda of the governments. You know, once we have effectively the German governments, there will be discussions on what the next step for the uh, Eurozone, in particular on the Banking Union. Long term, yes, I think you will have less banks. I would say the priority short term is to fundamentally transform the businesses, in particular in light of the new technologies. In 10 years time, yes, you will have less banks. And we've said that in our strategic plan. We want to be in a position of strength to size the opportunities, if any. Uh, for your business in particular, and pivoting off what David was saying, your international retail division uh, was really central to your growth prospects. Do you need to be an acquirer? And if so, how and where? In retail banking? No, I mean, we are in France. In French retail, the market is consolidated. There are other markets in Europe where, yes, you need to have more uh, domestic consolidation. And then outside, we have uh, international retail activities which are outside the Eurozone, which are driving, uh, going very well with strong growth, in good economies, with less mature markets. So we do not need to make acquisitions. 
It's more around the transformation of these activities. But even you know. domestically you don't need to? No, absolutely. We, we have in France uh, six large banks which concentrate the bulk of the assets. So there's no opportunity actually of consolidation and we don't need to. We have a good market share. But it's more about the transformation with new digital technology, transforming the networks, the back offices, because yes, we can provide a better service with the new technology at a lower price to their clients. But once again, with the European Banking Union, does that raise the specter or encourage banks such as Societe Generale to go across borders into Germany, into Italy, into Spain? Will that facilitate that in a way that in the past has been just too difficult to do? Not yet. What I mean by this, we don't have yet the benefit of the uh, completion of the banking union in terms of, for example, uh, full liquidity of capital flows between one country to the other. It's still a relatively fragmented market. If you look long term, yes, you will probably have more harmonization. Yes, you will probably have more benefit to think about consolidation, firstly domestically, because that makes sense, and beyond probably at some point cross-border. Where domestically do you see the consolidation? What banks? What well, it's, it's well known. You know, in Italy and Germany, we, we, you, we all know that there are still many banks, and probably you will have less banks going forward, because in most markets, to deal with the challenges of the new technology, the investments, you probably need to have, again, between three and six banks concentrating the bulk of the retail banking businesses. Well, which brings us really to that news that we saw uh, over the weekend that potentially Deutsche Bank is cutting as up to 500 staff. Credit Suisse is uh, pushing people to potentially take unpaid sabbaticals. Uh, why is the environment so hard and what do you experience? Well, you've seen in investment banking capital markets, first of all, there had been structural transformation. The fake business has been uh, impacted massively by the, all the new regulatory frameworks. And then on top of that, you, have effect, you had effectively in 2017 a low volatility environment, which does not help. As I've said, uh, we should have progressively a slightly better environment on the market. But beyond the structurally, you have also to adapt your business model to ensure that in the long term, these businesses can be profitable and that you meet your client's request. And things are changing also in the, on that front. You've set out a comprehensive strategy for your bank that includes growth, 3% or better a yeah. year. Also, cost controls, yeah. cost cuts as a practical matter. Where are you in that process? Have you got the, as we would call it, low-hanging fruit already? I know from cost cutting, it gets harder and harder the more of it you do. We still have a, a lot to do, I must say, the, in, in the French retail in particular. We have started to cut branches, we have started to cut back offices, but that is still a long way going forward because, again, the new technology means you can have now with mobile services and you used to go to branches, you don't go to branches any longer. So we have to adapt for that and we will have progressively the benefits of these uh, cost cuts knowing that we want to manage also this restructuring in a socially responsible way. We want to train the people, we want to find a solution to our people. So at the same time, are you seeing what's happening to your unit labor costs? The costs are really, the labor costs are really under control. We have to, to, to avoid, of course, increasing our costs. So wages are increasing, but modestly, because inflation also is low. So, I mean, we are able also to control our wage costs. But as you see the uh, curve steep, and once you get out of that negative deposit rate environment, do you feel like the wage story and the unit labor cost story changes? I think things will uh, remain relatively modest. In France, we still have relatively high unemployment. There is a good understanding among our staff also that, yes, we need to go through this transformation. And probably it's better for the bank also to invest in training, in invest in IT tools, rather than spending money maybe too quickly on wages and then being um, unable to invest. Whether fairly or unfairly, U.S. companies doing business in France historically have thought it's very difficult to deal with the labor laws. It's hard to let people go. Has that changed with the new regime, both your new president and also the new labor laws? Has that facilitated what you need to do? Absolutely. I think a lot is happening in France. Uh, with uh, the new president, there have been ma major reforms, one on the labor market, yes, to take out some decisions which were really very difficult to manage for international companies and also on the tax side, you know, the, the changes, for example, on the revenues from capital. So a lot is happening in France. The growth is good. The confidence by, by CEOs is very strong. So I think we have a, a good future and I'm very positive and optimistic on this front. Okay, we can't let you go without talking about Ray Dalio and Bridgewater. Just You're not surprised by that. Thing. Okay, you, like you won't be surprised. <laughs> uh, it's, it's puzzled a lot of people here because it's certainly not just your bank. He started with Italian banks, insurance companies, then it's expanded out to Siemens and all sorts of European equities. And a lot of people are wondering what's going on because many people think that actually European equities are undervalued. What is your theory about what's happening there? I don't know, and, and, and again, uh, every hedge fund or whatever can have his views. I, I'm pretty positive, again, as I've said, on Europe, because first of all, we should have two years of growth. 
rates will go up progressively, but not probably brutally. There is again good level of confidence and we have a capacity this year to further build the momentum and the confidence with new political initiatives. So I think that again, effectively, there is some uh, opportunities on the uh, European equity side. It can depend from sector, one sector to the other, from one thing to the other. But there are still some, I think, good opportunities. Where, where might Ray Dalio be right? What are the risks? Uh, you should ask honest? him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to get at, it's easy to talk to CEO and paint a really rosy picture of the company environment that you're in. But I'm trying to get at what's the weaker point, as in where might he be right to be shorting Sakgen and other European companies? The risk. Political? Le what? Listen, the, there might be a political risk. We'll have it, Italian election. To be frank, I, I'm not sure. I, I think really I have not seen uh, in the last 10 years so positive elements. Uh, governments in France, uh, an agreement in Germany, which will probably support the Eurozone construction. Currently, growth rates that we've never saw in the last basically 10 years and overall in the, in, in the world. So yes, in the longer term, you can have uh, perhaps uh, impacts of increasing interest rates. So slow down at this, and the, the, this issue of the cycle, how long it will be. But at least in the Eurozone, I must say I'm pretty positive for the coming two years. So to wrap all this up, from your point of view as CEO of Societe Generale, what's the biggest opportunity you face and what's the biggest risk? Biggest risk remains geopolitical, let's face it. Huh? There is uncertainty in this world. Opportunity is really to transform in an economy which is going well.